up to at home. We are at home. And I thought I would give you an update. Sorry, I'm gonna be walking around, so the lighting is probably gonna be changing, and the baby may wake up, so I might have to split this up. But I wanted to give you an update. Maybe I can find like a, oh, a tripod holder. Um, an update of what's been going on with this house. So most of you guys know we moved into a new house and we bought this house because of all of that. Um, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm not like the slickest when it comes to these vlogs, you know, still learning, but just bear with me. Um, I like how I'm putting you guys on the stand as I'm talking and the lighting is horrible. This should actually probably go the other way, but then you're gonna see my dirty kitchen. There we go, that's better lighting. So, my friends. So we moved into this house, we closed on this house on November 8th. And the house was built in 1977, and it has 2.44 um, acres. And we paid 10,000 over asking price for it. So since we've moved in, all of us except John has been sick. Everett had the flu and he was sick before the flu as well. He had like a really gnarly, like cold cough thing. Um, and then he got the flu. Everly had bronchitis in her left lung. And then I have been sick the entire time with who knows what. I'm sure it was just, you know, me being home with the kids 24 seven and everything coming back to me. Montgomery got really sick. She got RSV. She got a double ear infection and um, just recently took her back to the doctor and her ears are clear, but now she has to do breathing treatments with an inhaler. She has to have eye drops three times a day and um, she has to have saline sprayed up her nose and sucked out and all of that stuff before she eats or she starts like coughing and choking and it's, it's just been a whirlwind over here, okay? So on top of not feeling good the entire time. And I don't know, how, well, my husband gets to leave the house every day. That's why he didn't get sick. But, so on top of that, the first day, no, no the second, the second day we were in the house, I believe it is. So it was raining. No, this has nothing to do with the rain. Hold on. No, no, the day we moved in, it had been raining the entire weekend. We go into the garage, it's leaking. The garage itself, the wall, like there's a crack and there's water coming out of it. And we're like, okay. Then over by the garage, there's a drywall area that is saturated in water because there's not proper drainage outside of it. Not noted in the inspection, by the way. And, um, so we call and basically the previous owners were like, oh, we're sorry. Uh, it's only like $300 to epoxy the cracks, which coming into this house, we knew it had foundation issues previously. They showed all the paperwork of fixing things and blah, 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 blah. We had an actual um, foundation company come out and like go over and they were like, everything seems fine and you know, so we see that and the sellers basically were like, tough luck, sorry. Um, then we saw the drywall. That wasn't in the inspection at all. And then we're in the house a couple days. You know, my parents are here. There was one night where like all, like the kids and then my mom took a shower back to back to back. Well, um, we come outside, John gets home from work and he's like, there's water all over the garage floor. And we're thinking maybe it came in somewhere like from the garage, this and that. No, you can see on my bed frame, cause this is like only the first couple days, the bed frame is soaked, like it's all wet. And we look up and there's like this vent. Well, we open that up, pull the, um, insulation out and it's just pouring. I'll try and insert the video of this. And we were just like on high emotions already because we have the crack, we're trying to move out of the house. And I, it was, I mean, like I was crying my eyes out, this and that. Well, it ended up being, luckily, luckily my husband's handy. 
he went into where we were taking a shower and the ring around the shower head, not shower head, but like the pipe had broken. And then whoever put it in, like never even sealed it properly. So all the water was going behind the wall and going down. So luckily it wasn't like anything like a purse, like bursted pipe or anything. Okay. So that happened. Then, um, we finally get somebody out, the company that had already done a lot of the foundation work. We had them come out to give us a quote because there's a crack in the garage, which was, which we didn't know about, wasn't noted on the inspection, nothing. There is also a crack on the outside corner of the back of the house, which was noted. That's a thousand dollars to fix. And the, Hank wants out. The previous owners have been like, oh yeah, ballpark, like $300 to see it. No, it's a thousand dollars for two cracks. And I'm like, you have to be, you have to be kidding me, right? So we got to get more quotes on that. Then I have somebody come out because we want to get the fireplace going. I have somebody come out to do a cleaning and to inspect it. And this guy was awesome. We were both chatting about our old houses and um, I was like, if you tell me this fireplace doesn't work, lose my mind so like he's cleaning it this and that and I had asked him to show me like how to use the key to turn the gas on it doesn't work that fireplace doesn't work and as he's doing the inspection he finds that there's water leakage in it so it's not properly sealed anymore on the outside and he's like you know just so you know like I do have to like anytime if you go to sell the house and you don't fix these problems like it will like People can access it because I do have to term it unsafe for use. And I'm like, you guys, I'm losing my mind. So I go back into my inspection report and in the inspection, the gentleman put that he did inspect the fireplace and it was in good working order and just needed routine maintenance. So I have contacted the, um, the home inspection company because not only was that miss but there's two windows my son's window Everett and then our window in the master bedroom which also were not logged anywhere it said that he inspected windows but Everett's window doesn't even latch um, and then our window doesn't even close you could like press it like as hard as you can and latch it and it ends up like coming up I mean you guys you can see the blinds move that's how bad the draft is and that was not logged. The drywall and the improper drainage outside was not logged either. So there was just like a ton of things that we felt like went missed. And now we're paying for it when that's something that we could have asked the sellers to like recoup our money, you know, ask them to fix it. And now it's like windows are thousands of dollars. The fireplace, we have to get a plumber out to inspect the piping where the gas line goes. Then we have to water seal it and that's hundreds of dollars. And then it's like the cracks are a thousand and then we, um, we had to get the duct work clean cause it was so gross and caked up. And then we were all sick. So I was like, let's get that clean. That company, um, I actually ended up getting comped because which was great on the company. Um, because they ended up coming in and when I came home, like there was dirt from the vents above like my Apple desktop, my expensive printer, and the debris was just everywhere. They left it everywhere. They tracked mud in Everly's room and stained the carpet. And then when they like cleaned the dust, um, the um, dryer vent out, they just left it all on the yard for us. So I had contacted them and that is something that like you guys don't, stay quiet like speak up if you're paying big money for something and you're not happy with the results or what happened then make sure you communicate that because i wasn't hoping that the company was going to give me my service for free i just emailed him and expressed like the gentlemen were super nice and um this and that but they left a mess and now it's like i get off the camera 
And now I'm over here. I paid you guys $500 to do this service, but now I'm having to clean up for it. And I just, you know, expressed that I wasn't happy. And the owner was gracious and he was like, I apologize. I want to make this right. I want you guys to come back. Like I'm going to comp this service, this and that. So that was really nice of the company. Totally commend them for that. Um, and then I think what I found is black mold. Um, we took the baseboards out to, um, paint and in front of one of the vents is like one of those thin baseboards. You turn it around, there's black all over it. So I've contacted a company. They haven't gotten back to me yet, um, to test for mold. So we'll see what happens, um, with that. Maybe it's not black mold. I, I don't, I don't know. It was in front of a vent. Um, and this house has not been maintained. This house was not maintained whatsoever. So, I mean, it, it could just be dust. Debris. I don't know. But we will take action once that test comes back if there are issues. But it has been a very stressful month. It, it's, you know, having sick kids and being sick myself for an entire month. I have not left the house other than going to Walmart and I finally got to go to the thrift store that lasted 30 minutes and then Montgomery lost her mind. Um, which, you know, she obviously deserves not, not to want to be in the car seat and stuff like that. But, um, like I haven't been able to go anywhere, do anything. And then there's just so much work with this house. And like, we knew it needed work. We did. Um, but there's just things that I feel like weren't properly communicated or done that could have saved us money or work if we had known about it. And so it's, it's been frustrating. It's been deflating and it's been emotional. It has been so emotional and I'm finally starting to feel good. So I feel like it's bringing like a new wave over me, like allowing me to maybe get like excited about like redoing the house. But then, um, it's also like, what else are we going to find? What else are we going to find? And like, I can, I'm going to take you through, I'm going to try and take you through the house. I've taken you guys through a tour, but just like little things that we've found, um, like with the lighting or just like the crappy crafts, like them trying to do like the, tri you know what? I'm not going to point everything out. You know what? It is what it is, but there's just so many things that were half asked in this house. And, um, and there's so many things that just need to be done in general, other than cosmetic to make this house sellable. And John and I would not be able to sleep at night if we didn't do right by fixing the things that need to be fixed. So whoever buys this house next, you know, doesn't move into the situation we did. So, um, at this point we've decided to flip the house. We're going to stay here two years. We are going to invest the profits from our sale of our previous home into this house. So we are thinking about $40,000. Um, and my realtor is coming over on Saturday to kind of tell us where to invest the money. Obviously the kitchen and the bathrooms and then the flooring for sure. You guys saw all the amazing flooring in this house. So, um, and it's a shame and maybe, maybe we'll change our mind after like we start working on the house. But regardless, we had hopes of building onto the house and we had a contractor come out, um, and have received a bid and it was, the bid was $117,000. I mean, there's no way. And it just wouldn't even make sense putting that much money into a house. So basically it, we're in the same size house that we were previously still missing a bedroom because the bedroom downstairs is not suitable for a child. And, um, we got land out of it. And what's good about that is land always goes up in value. So, um, yeah, as of right now, we are planning on flipping the house and, uh, we did a great job of flipping our last house. We made a great amount of money off of it. So hopefully we could do the same for this, especially with the land here and everything. 
Um, and like I said, maybe things will turn around and <laughs> all magically win the lotto and then we could like do the add-ons and stuff. And this could be our forever home. Who knows? But as of right now, um, it's just a very frustrating uh, time for us. And, you know, it takes away from spending time with our kids. And even then, I'm like, we need to start getting them more involved in like helping with the DIY work and stuff. Um, you know, like they can help with painting the cabinets and all of that stuff. So um, we're definitely going to take you along on the journey of fixing up our first um, room is actually going to be like we painted the living room that's all we did we just painted the living room we painted all of the rooms and that's as far as we got and then we said let's enjoy the holiday and we'll keep going so our first project is going to be the dining room because it's the only room that's basically a blank slate all the walls are normal there's only one light on the ceiling only one every other room has like two or more um and they're not even like lined up with each other. They're like beep, 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 beep. So um, that one is more of a blank slate. So we're gonna start in there by stripping the popcorn ceiling, um, doing the flooring, and then that way we could kind of gauge whatever flooring we pick. Um, we can gauge kind of where we can go with like different stain colors and all of that. So we're gonna do the flooring in there, which is all tile right now. So that'll be fun. We're gonna do the batten board on the walls and yeah and we're gonna do like the the window framing so I'm gonna take you guys all on that journey with us and then I'm also going to be asking you guys for a lot of advice like when it comes to like colors and stuff for example do we paint the fireplace brick or do we not um there's just so much overspray from the previous people doing like painting the walls and all that that I'm like mm, I don't know um but we'll get there when we get there right one step at a time but I'll definitely be asking you guys opinions and all of that good stuff so make sure you are following Sammy Veltri at home on TikTok and then I do have an Instagram as well that I'll try and post along the way and um thank you guys for listening to me complain and I just want to know I am thankful and grateful that I'm 36 years old and this is the second home we have been able to own. I mean, five, four years, four years, three years ago, we would have never thought with just like our life and everything we were going through that we would ever even become homeowners, let alone being able to own a second home in a matter of two short years. And I am grateful to have a roof over our heads and to be able to look into this beautiful backyard and see this land and see the sunset. So I am grateful. I don't want anybody to think that I am ungrateful. It is just a lot at one time and I know we'll work through it. We're a strong family and I love that I have the support from all of you guys. Um, and just know, I might not respond to every comment, but I do read the comments and I appreciate your guys' feedbacks, your opinions, all that stuff totally totally appreciate it um so with that said i'm gonna let you go uh, and i hope you guys have an amazing holiday i'm gonna be putting out that thrift video pretty shortly i just haven't wanted to get anything out of the car because it's spring okay all right you guys happy holidays from my home to yours bye